not so long ago I was speaking about the equatorial magnetic connectivity and I managed to identify two field lines or uh, two kinds of connections uh, one is connected with the inflow of particles and the second one is connected with the outflow of particles according to my observations the direction uh, which is connected with the outflow of particles uh, looks like this while the current connected with the inflow of particles is supposed to look like this So in both kinds of connections the direction of uh, particle flow is the same. According to my model the direction is clockwise. It is important because uh, particles can mix with each other only when they have the same direction of current flow. But as you can see on those images the particles are moving clockwise uh, no matter if the connection is positive or negative. And that means uh, no matter if the particles are, are coming in or are being sucked out from the ionosphere. I've managed as well to identify the connectivity points on the HMF2 monitor. According to my model, this one is the giving, that means positive connection. And this one is the negative connection uh, connected with the outflow of particles from the ionosphere. I've managed as well to guess uh, in which parts of the globe uh, the field lines like to connect themselves. I've noticed that the negative field line likes to connect itself uh, to the day-night reconnection point uh, but on the west side of the globe. The positive field line on the other hand uh, likes to connect itself uh, to the day-night reconnection point uh, but on the east side of the globe. But it would be too easy if it would end at this. In reality the process of equatorial magnetic connection is far more complicated. Especially when the sun activity is high. And in the day of 30th May uh, we had an impact of a frontal density wave of a coronal host stream. And it has disturbed the equatorial connectivity very strong. And this gives me a nice opportunity to show you how the sun activity affects the equatorial connections. But first of all, you need to keep in mind that uh, besides the fact that uh, we have protons and electrons uh, which are behaving in a tot absolutely different way uh, we have as well the energy bands it is important because when you watch the current ring monitors on ISWA uh, you will probably notice that as protons so electrons uh, are behaving totally in totally different ways uh, at different energy levels just like here on the left monitor uh, we have electrons at a minus 8 kilo electron volts and on the right screen uh, we have as well electrons but uh, at 1 kilo electro volts as you can probably see the electrons at higher energy levels are connected with the positive current flow that means that the particles are coming in into the ionosphere at the same time the electrons at uh, 1 kilo electron volt are connected with the negative uh, current flow 
that means that the particles are moving out from the ionosphere. So even if on both monitors we can see the electrons, their direction of flow is completely opposite in both cases. But this is not all. It looks that particles at different energy levels are connecting themselves in different parts of the globe. It is visible here. As you can see, the electrons at a minus 8 kilo electrovolts uh, are connecting themselves uh, in a different spot than the electrons at uh, one, minus 1 kilo electron volt. It seems that particles at the uh, lowest energy bands, uh, like the electrons at uh, 1 kilo electrovolt, uh, connect themselves close to the day night reconnection point. Uh, while the particles uh, at higher energy levels uh, like to connect themselves further in the, the night side of Earth. You should remember that all the time before I was talking about the inflow of electrons and outflow of protons, but it looks that it is not so simple. However, it looks that the behavior of particles at lowest energy bands is not so simple. It looks that the particles can change the direction of their flow uh, and they can flow in or uh, being sucked out uh, from the ionosphere no matter if they have positive or negative charge. If you look closely you will notice that uh, around 12 UTC uh, the protons at uh, 1 kilo electron volt uh, were coming in into the ionosphere. But look here, uh, just before 15 UTC, uh, the direction of current flow started to change. Notice that soon after uh, the direction of current flow changed for the protons at uh, 1 kilo electron volt, uh, we had a strong discharge of current rings. To be honest, it was a second discharge of this day. The first one took place a couple hours before. Anyway, it looks that after the discharge, when the particles started to come back into the current rings, uh, the direction of current flow for the protons at uh, 1 kilo electron volt uh, was visibly negative. All of this gives me a huge help uh, as for explaining the discharges of current rings uh, which are visible from time to time on the current ring monitors on ISWA and, uh, and which from last couple days are getting more and more frequent. But before we will move further I will have to explain you a couple things more. Most important is to keep in mind that because of the right hand rule the direction in which the particles are moving has to be always perpendicular to the um, uh, direction of magnetic field. And you can see it nicely on this image uh, where the velocity vectors are pointing towards the Earth uh, while the magnetic field lines are perpendicular to, the, uh, to it. But you need to keep in mind that this image is a wide cut view so even if this uh, field line appears uh, to be a straight line connecting the uh, north with the south, it doesn't mean exactly that it is parallel to the uh, z-dimensional axis. Because when we look at the x-cut view, uh, we will see something completely different. As you can see here, uh, the field lines are placed uh, at an angle to the z and y-dimensional axis, and this angle is changing quite often, depending on the EMF sector in which Earth is currently placed. And this is exactly what the ACE satellite is recording on its magnetic charts. Anyway, magnetosphere is being shaped by those field lines uh, depending on the angle uh, of the EMF current flow. 
of course the most important is the BZ component of the magnetic field which describes the uh, north and south direction of magnetic field uh, when the BZ component becomes strongly negative particles can enter the polar cusp over the magnetic poles and this is causing the geomagnetic storms for example on this image you can see that the magnetosphere is being strongly influenced by the EMF current flow even if the field lines are placed at an angle uh, to the Z dimensional axis but why I am talking about this stuff? because the parts of IMF uh, with different angles of the field lines are separated with the borders which are called sector boundaries and when such a sector boundary is passing through the magnetosphere it can cause an inflow of particles into the current rings when they can meet particles uh, which were aligned with different current flow in such case the particles won't mix with each other and we can see uh, such process on the current ring monitors uh, quite often my guess is that those sector boundaries have a lot to do with the discharges of current rings I've noticed many times before that soon after the magnetosphere passed through a sector boundary the current rings were discharged <laughs> it looks that just when I started to think that I know already quite a lot about the current rings and the equatorial magnetic connections uh, the reality uh, decided to make me a joke and show clearly that my knowledge about the space environment is still tiny truth is that those readings mean that uh, my model needs still a lot of improvement but first look at the animation As you can see the uh, direction of the flux tube uh, changed uh, quite a lot in the in the matter of couple hours at 11 UTC uh, the flux tube was connected to the uh, day night reconnection point uh, at the west side of the globe But then uh, the entire tube moved uh, further to the night side. And uh, nine hours later, the connection looked like this. the field line remained negative but uh, the connectivity point moved to the second uh, day night reconnection point uh, to the eastern uh, part of the globe uh, I forgot to tell you that uh, this monitor shows the protons at one kilo electron volt so as I told you a couple minutes before, according to my observations, the uh, particles at lowest energy bands uh, connect themselves mostly to the western uh, day-night reconnection point, like this. To be honest, I never seen before uh, the flux tube uh, connecting in such way as you can see here. something completely new for me before all the time when the direction of flux tube was changing uh, we had the uh, inflows of particles to the current rings and this was stopping the, the connectivity from moving further into the night side